This is the prime. It's time to go to warp drive. Is uh, that Arnold Schwarzenegger? Warp, warp drive. It's warp drive time. Get in the chopper now. Get in the chopper. Get in the chopper. Get in the shuttlecraft. It's not the tumor. It's keeping up with the Cartasians. Can you do that the entire episode? Yes. That'd be great. Yes. I don't think you'd be able to speak the next I'm, week. No. Yes. This church would love it. Yeah. Welcome to keeping up with the Cartasian thing. Hey, Pastor Nick, what happened to your voice? <laughs> <laughs> the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Wait, now it's going. I didn't say. Good Lord. Anyways, welcome to <laughs> keeping up with the Cardassians. Odd Pods Media Network. Affiliate. 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 Uh, we are uh, we are happy to be here. I'm Nick. This is Rob. I'm Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and we are happy to be here today. We have two episodes of Deep Space Nine review with you in the second half of the show. That is for the uniform and in Purgatory Shadow. Ooh, sounds ominous. It's like ominous, but it's not exactly. I wonder, Omicron? I wonder if Garrick's in that episode. No, I don't um, think he is. My notes say so. <laughs> yeah, his <laughs> line of note. His line of Garrick. note. Garrick! <laughs> Exclamation point. Yeah. I love, so first of all, I love how when we first started this podcast, your notes were extensive. They were they pages were. and pages. And now in Purgatory's Shadow, the only note is Garrick with an exclamation uh, point. And you know, has had finally some good war episodes. There's two oh, notes. Yeah, there is. Oh, yeah. Oh, just oh. episode, though. Yeah. yeah. The episode. The first one kind of was. Episode. We want to watch one. Yeah. What? No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well no, for the, the uniform is a war uniform. episode too. Yeah. yeah. No, because I know that I know that it ended. Listen, <laughs> uh, we're not going to get into that yet because we, we knew you were going to be frustrated. We talked about it. Rob sent me a message that said we cannot let Joe know. Keep your mouth shut. Oh wow! Shut. So you guys are talking behind my back. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. Yes, we did. On this. I can. I can. Just see, I can already feel some podcast <sighs> tension. There is some podcast tension. Ooh. Show meeting. Show meeting. Yeah. Show, show meeting me for two. Show mediation. Yeah, oh, nice. Yes, yes. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to review those episodes in the second half of the show. As you know, we like to, uh, the first half of the show, we like to kind of just catch up with each other, talk about what's going on in the world, and that can include pop culture news. It can include uh, political news, which Rob usually tunes out for when that happens. Rob leads the um, way. Rob, yeah, he does. Um, it, uh, Rob is our, the keeping up with the Kardashians political correspondent, Rob. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> going to Rob. <laughs> And the chopper, because you're in the chopper, you're... you're... Uh, I get it. And Ooh. then and I was saying, get in the Ooh. chopper now at the beginning of the episode. Uh, is I, I, I see what you did there. That's not your best, we cir- were just... that's not your best circle <laughs> back, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> we were just going to acknowledge it, though. We're just going to... We are now. No. Nick, the, Nick, he makes you acknowledge how bad the joke is. <laughs> I do. That's <laughs> what makes the joke funny. Is you keep coming back to it and it becomes uncomfortable. Mm, what if it's uncomfortable from the start? Oh, well then that's just <laughs> bonus. That's bonus joke. Oh. Uh, so, anyways, going to start to talk about actual news stuff here today. And what the hell? What the hell happened this week? I feel like nothing happened this week. So it was there was some, felt very quiet. No, I mean stuff happened. Like just the other day, uh, this is a Star Trek news technically. Picard, uh, they shut down production right now because a large chunk of members mm. got got the civvy, COVID. This is got the civvy. Yeah, I call it the civvy. That's what we're calling it. You now? know, because you remember in Scrubs when they called the HIV, they called it the heavy, and they had a heavy dance, and they're like, "Oh, that's inappropriate." <laughs> so now I call it the civvy. I love that COVID. show. Yeah, I know. I know. COVID has too many names. Omicron, Delta. It's, it, yeah, it's too. It's too many. Pick one. Pick a main name and a nickname. Yeah. Well, if you had it a uh, certain president's way, it'd be a racist name. Yeah, but I, I like the I like Vid. <laughs> See, that, that's Rob's face. Yeah, yeah. Rob likes that name. I, I just thought it was funny. That's all. Yeah. Not yeah. right. Still thought it was funny. Yeah. I like I like in the moment. I like calling it the Vid. The Vid. Rona. Yeah. Ro- Rona's a I good one. Rona. I think Rona's a good one. For me, it's Civvy. Civvy. Rona. I like Rona though. I, Rona's my my name. For it. Yeah. Your default. Okay. Whatever we gotta do to get through this traumatizing uh, to the last two years. Yeah, just make up nicknames so we don't so we don't all have panic attacks and 
and, and, and just curl up into a ball and cry in fetal positions all the time which half of us are doing anyway yeah that's yep. true i actually have that on my schedule for 1 p.m today oh yeah you're scared are you at the point where you're scheduling your mental breakdown i am i'm scheduling i'm still going i'm just still going by it flying by the seat of my pants I just my find mental it, health i just find it more efficient for me if i just schedule it you know you no know, that's good they say to break out times for your hobbies i'm just looking i just stand in front of the mirror and i just cry I like the randomness of it all. Oh, yeah. there it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm depressed! Oh, I'm depressed. Because at first, yeah. you know, you're surprised you're depressed, but when you're actually depressed, you... It's surprising. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, it, that's the like end. Like finding money in your pocket, you just pull it out. Wow, I didn't realize oh, I had all this depression gosh, in my back pocket. Is, that's this our is, mental health part of the episode. This is yeah. sad. This yeah. is sad. Yeah. Um, so... In other were in other things though, um, I neither one of you have watched it. I know because you know I've mentioned it. The Witcher um, is fantastic, and I finally, finally. So season two came out a couple weeks ago, and I had committed myself. Actually, it came out before Christmas. I had committed myself to watching one episode a week because Netflix releases everything at once, right? Yeah. Which is awesome and terrible all at the same time because then you binge watch and binge watching can be great, but then it also means like oh it's over right right that's um, what she said yeah yeah uh, so I committed to one episode a week right and I texted a couple of my friends um, not you two because you suck because uh, you don't watch it and I said well, you I, did, want to, you, I want to watch it oh well, you did say friends so I assumed that I wasn't getting right. the text <laughs> yeah, that's true yeah it's not that I don't want to watch it and I, yeah I said I said to them I said. Will you commit with me to one episode a week? And they said yes. And two days later, they said no. We watched the whole season. So I'm like, oh crap, what am I going to do? I got to hold strong. I got to hold strong. So I got Leslie to commit to watching the first season with me because she's like, this looks terrible and lame. I'm not going to watch it. And I said, look, Henry Cavill is naked in it. And she said, okay, let's watch it. <laughs> well, here's a, okay, hold He's on. Not back, back, naked. Back, well, you had me at that. Let's too. backtrack a second. One, uh, I didn't get the one week, one episode a week offer. I could, I, I might. Be I, able could, to, I could make that happen, probably. I might oh, be able no, to pay myself. Like, <clears throat> and two, nobody mentioned Henry Cavill nudity. Henry Cavill nudity. I don't. Yes. I feel like you're burying the lead. Like I not completely. You should lead with I mean, that. I agree. Let's be clear. It's not. You know, you get him in a hot tub, but like that's about it. Well, I feel like okay. Should, I feel like you should have sold it as Henry Cavill nude. You want to watch The Watcher? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, the witcher, the witch. I don't know. Oh, you don't even have to. The watcher. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Well, that, the name. I'm watcher. I hardly knew her. I'm watching the shit out of that. Yeah, the watcher. Yeah, uh, you know, Henry. it doesn't matter what it's called. Yeah, it's called Henry Cavill in a hot tub. Yeah, man. There you go. Yeah, it could be Hot Tub Time Machine Three. Uh, is there yeah, a two? There's, I think there, there is, is a two. There yeah, is a two. two. Okay, good. I yeah. thought of. I, I the first one was great. So, yeah, second one. I I not watched the second one. So, anyways, the whole point being, I got Leslie to finally watch it with me. And I don't know if she actually enjoyed it or if she was pretending she enjoyed it because I was so obsessed with her getting to watch it with me, right? Like, it's, but uh, um, we, we we finished the second season too. So I my one episode a week thing went out the window. Wow, it's so good, gentlemen. It's so good. It's a little, there are points where it's a little cheesy, but it's a fun show. It's like Game of Thrones, um, but not as serious i don't know i guess that's how to describe it i don't know it's great it's good watch it it's henry cavill all right well maybe <laughs> that's that a no joe's not that's not it. that's a no well here well so what happened how when would you have finished it if you were on your one one episode a week timeline late february jesus christ so you just what, you watch the first one and you're just like I it's only wait, it's only eight episodes each season is eight episodes uh, so, and they're hour long. When episodes. did it start? When did season two start? Uh, right before Christmas time. Okay, so yeah, early February probably. Yeah, early February, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I probably, I went four weeks ahead is what I did. So, All right. um, but yeah, so you, it's yeah, good. You're not a man of your word. I'm not, not even a, to yourself. I'm not a man of my word. I, I was kind of like, uh, I was kind of like Kramer in Seinfeld. Where I'm, I'm out. Like, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, it happened. So watch Witcher, it's good. Um, though I will notice, I will say that every time I recommend a show for you gentlemen to watch, it never happens. I think you've only recommended Witcher. 
Yeah. That's just, it. Just, just The Witcher. Yeah. I haven't recommended another show for you. No, no just The Witcher. That's the only one. There is this one show called Battlestar Galactica. I've never heard of it. <sighs> Does it ring a bell? No. Nope. So it's just The Witcher. It's on Peacock Network. Peacock. The Pe Witcher. Is that is that the, is that what it says when you pull up the the app? I wish it did. <laughs> you know, like Netflix goes up. Yeah. I wish it wouldn't say. Peacock. <laughs> I'd be more interested in it. I constantly watch it because of the the, the cock. Peacock. Yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't think I would ever watch it. <laughs> this is a very uncomfortable episode so far. Uh, oh, any other? Do you guys have news? Because I have more stuff that I could talk about. But I know neither one of you have watched it. But I, I finished Cobra Kai season four. Never heard of it. Yeah, never heard of it. That's my thing. Oh, darn well, he's never seen. He's never seen the Karate Kid. That's right. It's true. It's true. So can we? Would... Can you guys hit us up on the socials and just? Send Nick a ton of hate mail. Yeah. How uh, or not? Let I don't it, not need any more. Hate, I don't need any more hate mail than I already get. Okay. That means you should. You do it. you know you you're you need more. Comment <laughs> on one of these things and just say Nick, you're an idiot. Well, that's true. I mean, they don't even have to tell me that. To, yeah. I already know. Because without Karate Kid, you can't get to Cobra Kai. Mm. And Cobra Kai is. I've I've watched the first season. Well, most of the first season, and it's just. It's just good. Like, it's... There's no reason for it to be good. It's you cheesy. Watch it, you watch it, you go, this shouldn't be good. Yeah, it is, it is it cheesy, is. though. Oh, it's terribly te cheesy. But I think that's, but it's cheesy that's, in probably, a good way. that's probably what makes it good, right? Because it embraces what it is. Yeah, yeah, the absurdity of it all. Yeah, when shows try to be something they're not, that's the problem. It definitely uh, doesn't take itself too seriously. No, thank God. But it, at the same time, it, it doesn't fall off the wagon of, abs of of absurdity like you're like it it, it keeps your interest the, the storyline is, is good enough to keep your interest but there's kind of jokes and side things yeah for the for the uh the, the karate kid fans that are out there yeah. and, and to reiterate I, I enjoy the show season four i enjoy just as well or season three whatever we're on <laughs> season but, four but it seems like they actually tried to tell a story this year, mm -hmm. so I don't think this was, season was as good as the other ones. Because no, you, you, wanted, you wanted it to be a no, little more... It seems like they tried a little harder. And, they, and, they started taking themselves a little more too seriously. Exactly, and it, and it kind of showed, and you're like, well, that was okay. Like, the first half of the season, you're kind of like, eh. And yeah. then the second half of the season, you're like, that's a little better. Okay, all right. Without going too far into it. I know, you guys I know seen it. well, my, my middle son, uh, it's his favorite show. He He... It's like uh, he just finished season four, and then you know what he did? He started rewatching it again, just right back to the beginning. Started watching season. This would be like his third watch of it. You should tell him he has to try to do some of what Johnny teaches his kids. Oh, he does. He wanted to, he wanted to do karate with me in the kitchen the other day. Yeah, he did. He said, "Attack me!" And, and like, you should have said, "No mercy," and then beat yeah. the crap out of him. Well, I pulled the crate and kicked him in the <laughs> kicked him into the sink. Sweep the leg. Yeah, kicked him right in the sink. Good. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Did you yeah. practice on a beach before you decided to do that? See, I know that. From Please the tell me you're playing. You're the best around. Oh yeah. Oh, that's, I mean, yeah. You have to. Yes. We were we were doing montages. <laughs> in the kitchen, we're gonna need montages. a montage. I love that from Team America. Yes. That's like the best montage ever. Which have you guys watched the COVID special for South Park? Probably not. No, it's no. on. It's on Paramount, Paramount Plus. Plus, which is so weird and confusing. It, There's said, some you, clever you, stuff in it. Yeah, you were you were telling me that it was it was worth a watch. Yeah, it's worth the watch, especially like the it's not it's worth a watch. I haven't watched South Park in a long, long time. And I I didn't I guess I didn't even realize that it was still uh a thing. That it was still going on, like it's still being produced. I um I come in and out. I yeah. have my friend Marty, who uh, car salesman at Bill Brown Ford for all your Ford needs. <laughs> And, um, and and if if you need a if you need a Ford F one Ford F one fifty to power your podcast, go see Mark. They go got Marty. Marty. they got your back. But uh, he watches it pretty regularly, or my friend John does, and kind of tells me you should watch this. It's just amazing how. Where does well, John work? Can you plug his? Uh... Uh, Electromatic. If you need good science, <laughs> please look up Electromatic on the internet for, for all your <laughs> sign needs. High level sign needs. Yeah, we're not talking yard signs. <laughs> 
No, we're talking. They're talking stadium signs. Yeah. Sign me up. Yeah. Oh. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I hate myself. But they'll tell me, hey, you, guys, you should watch it, and that's when I jump in and, and say that, yeah, they're yeah. right. It's amazing how sh- topical that show can be. Like, the most recent COVID special, Yeah. Mm. Omicron had just been a thing, and, and this came out like a week later, and they were able to include jabs at Omicron. That was, that was always the thing with South Park, is how instantly topical they were right. it's amazing usually with other shows even even animated shows it takes a while to kind of get that cycle oh something happens in the news we can incorporate it into our writing and it takes maybe half a season or months or, or whatever um but with south park it's all it's always been like almost instantaneous well and that's i think that's why it survived for so long right because it yeah. is a topical show and that's worked in its favor i remember at one point years and years ago when they were finally like they were talking about like ending it mm. and people flipped out and then comedy central rolled up with basically a brinks truck of cash and and it continues I haven't watched South Park, though, probably... How long has it been on the air? 20 years? 22 or something like that, I think. Yeah, I probably haven't watched it in at least a decade. At well, least. it had to have been like 97 or 98 when it came out. I I want to say it was 99. No, because I my friend Kurt was alive when it came out, I think. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let me, look, been... uh, let, let, me, uh, let me fact check this. That was a long time ago, so I could be off my time. South right? Park Wiki. Wikipedia. Wik- Wikipedia, 1997. 309 episodes. Wow. 20, 23 seasons. Whew. Remember when they used to kill Kenny? Yeah. That was a long time ago. I love the movie. Blame Canada. Blame Cam. Shut your up and phase, Uncle Effer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was classic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As I, I, I never... I never thought there would be enough room for three hour tour. Ma- three mainstream adult themed animated shows. I didn't think there was enough room for one. So, uh, the Simpsons, Family Guy, and South Park are the are the big three. Oh, that's I true. Think. Yeah, you're right. You didn't mention the Cleveland show. This is the Cleveland show. It was because that's a spinoff of I know Family Guy. I love the theme song of that one. Family Guy was so good early. Yeah, I had watched, early, I had early watched, Family Guy was really good. <laughs> I haven't really watched good. early and, seasons were yeah incredible. Yeah, I haven't watched yeah. it in a decade, so I couldn't even tell you about it now. It, it, it early early Family Guy, kind for a moment there made the other two almost obsolete. It did more so more so I think The Simpsons. Oh yeah, because I, South, I think South Park has its, it's niche. Thing. Yeah, and it, it kind of has its fans and it's it does its own it. It's kind of more sim. I would say it's more similar to Family Guy, but it's not even nope. near what the other two are. Right. But f- I think Family Guy, for for a moment there, made The Simpsons like eh, this is kind of like yeah, like, un- like slow pitch. Well, and, yeah. And, and you know what hurt it is Family Guy. I think they went too zany and too um, like the whole point of Family Guy was that they would kind of push the the boundaries of comedy, mm-hmm. but they wouldn't cross the line. And now I think it's a show that crosses the line all the time. Which oh, they try to hide what they're saying? Yes, that's what I mean. I think that's maybe why I started stopped watching it watching it at one point, because it seems like it was trying as opposed yeah. to letting it just happen. I think they always cross the line, but I think like the early seasons, I think they did it more organically. That's a good word. Whereas... Now it's just like okay, here's here's the setup and here's the punchline and we're gonna it's gonna cross the line and you you see it coming. It's formulaic. Yeah. Uh, whereas in in the early seasons it was that was kind of fresh. The Simpsons did it to a point. I think the Simpsons are more to what Nick said. Like they pushed boundaries, but then the Simpsons never really crossed the line. I think the Simpsons were more um, a bit more quote unquote family friendly, but they what? did they did approach topics and things in, in a more mature way yeah. without cross like crossing lines. You know what's interesting is I think back to when The Simpsons came out and I was younger, obviously, and like I went to parochial school at the time, so Christian school and Christian church and pastor, dad, and all that. Mm-hmm. They hated that show. And watching it, yeah. you kind of go, why? It's nothing. The kid says, eat my shorts. Yeah. Okay, so what? 
Because yeah. at the time it was considered edgy. It was it was? Yeah. I mean, Bart. Was Bart. Yeah, Bart Simpson was edgy. A disrespectful child yeah. all the time. A dad who constantly tried to choke his kid. Well, I mean, and it was it was a cartoon. It was a cartoon, so it was is. But auto- actually acted on. But it was like automatically uh, appealing to children. So now you have this kind of nasty kid influencing. They didn't want this kid influencing another ge- a generation of kids to act that way. No, the question is, did he? Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm totally just I think, kidding. Yeah, I think so, but I don't think it was as bad as they thought it would be. Yeah. You know, it's funny, though, because my, my son has just recently gotten into watching The Simpsons, uh, and by recently, I mean within the past month, and he's watching a ton of it. Mm. Um, and he's watching some of the earlier episodes, and I'm like, wow, they can't do that on TV now. Like, with some of the characters, like, you know, Apu, obviously, you can't do that. Um, some of the, like, the, the, the homophobic jokes they mm-hmm. make in the show, like, yeah. there's a lot they could not get away with today, um, which is fascinating. Watching, to me. watching older television, which is the majority of TV that I watch, is older TV, whether it be sitcoms or dramas doesn't matter. I, old TV is like, that's my wheelhouse. You really, though, even even shows as recent as the early 2000s, or, or even up to like... Yeah, like Friends. Even, uh, even through uh, The Office. Yeah, yeah. Which was, what, 2010 or so? So, when so basically... Not that long ago, yeah. So yeah. you know what you're implying? The rise of social media. The rise of social media killed your ability to make edgy comedy because you get canceled. Yeah. I mean, there, there, there is a line between edgy comedy and offensive. offensive. Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say that a lot of these older shows were offensive. And if they were, I, I don't think it was... Mm, you don't I don't think know. it was mean spirited. You know, no, you know I, I really don't. I think the, I think the only one of the one of the few uh, would be all in the family, and I don't even know that that was mean spirited. I just think that's what that character was. It was a time and place, and it was that character. Well, it was also meant to be a commentary, right? They weren't right. making yeah. light of the fact he was this way. They were right, but they could, but they also around. had because the daughter and her husband. Yes. Had the opposing view. Yes, and they had. So and they would it, argue. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So it wasn't necessarily just this guy spouting off, uh, you know, racial uh, comments and things like that, which which he did, but there was also the other side of it. Um, and Edith was this. I don't know. I thought it was a. a I thought there's more to take away from that show than um, what people are actually willing to do I nowadays. Agree. You know, one of the things I was just thinking of, and maybe why you couldn't get away with it now, is because what the cast look like, right? Oh, absolutely. It was always white mm-hmm. people, right? Yeah. Yep. Friends. A, a bunch of white friends living in New York who never interact with anyone else that's not white, right? Like, everyone's... That's not true of New York, yeah. you know? Um, so a lot of these... And then a lot of the writers, white men, right? So... Again, if you have a diverse cast and a diverse writer's room and diverse directors, I think those things are more forgivable, right? Yeah. Um, and I think maybe that's part of the problem um, from TV back then. Um, oh, oh, absolutely. I mean... I'm trying we, to think of a show now. What's a show now that's really edgy and humor that gets away with it, that South Park. No, I'm, ta- but, I'm, and, talking, about animated, like, I'm so. talking about like live action sitcoms like, right now. That gets away uh, with you. I mean, what are some major... like you had uh, like what you had Modern Family. You had I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Uh, was that uh, Blackish? Blackish, right? But that and they do use that's, humor that's like an, that. That's an edgy. What was that Showtime yeah. show everybody loved? Was that one of them? I never watched. Sex in the City. No, oh, that was HBO. Um, the one with William H Macy. Oh, uh, Shameless. Shameless. Yeah, was that one of them that was edgy? I don't know. It was. Yeah. yeah, it was basically... But again, that's that's Showtime. That's so I different think, I think, world. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. network television where it's it's to the masses. Where they can get away with it, right? Um, I don't think, there, I don't I think, think there's, there's a lot of edgy... Uh, I think the, I think the edgy shows are more... Uh, the the dramatic shows now that, that, are, that take on social commentary. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, the, I, I know, I don't know if you guys ever watched This Is Us. No. Yes. So that that's a great show with a diverse cast, but they they take on a lot of social issues as well, especially the last 
season. Or yeah, two. about racism yeah. And, and and yeah, yeah. And that's you know they that's not necessarily a comedy, but um, they they definitely take on some edgier topics or some more uh, social comment, some more like uh, current event socially topical. I got you. Things. Well, and I guess I'm real. I'm looking up like sitcoms right now. I not think the, the reality is sitcoms are dead. Yeah, there's not really any sitcoms out anymore. Not a lot of them. No, there I mean, really is the Connors. Like, Blackish, I think, is done or is is is, 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 ending. Off, is ending. I think they're on their final season. I think NBC just released two new Thursday shows that they're uh, saying are the best things since. Sure, C- I'm sure CBS has something. Oh, I'm sure CBS. Has. Oh, they have Young Sheldon at least. Yeah, Young Sheldon. I don't <laughs> think that's that's not edgy at all. No. Let's make fun um, of nerdy kids. Like that's, that's. I don't think they make fun of it. I think they actually do. And, I, I've I've watched that a, embrace a little bit. nerd culture. No, I think, I think I don't know. They yeah, I think there's more embracing, and then there's not a lot of joking about anymore. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't joke about. You can't. You, you don't want. No. There's more. It's more embracing and accepting of, which, unfortunately, makes for boring uh, sitcoms. Really. Mm-hmm. Because the part of that is it's it's situational comedy. It's it's coincidentally there's actually a, a routine about that in the COVID specials for South Park. <laughs> a whole thing about it. Uh, but I mean, to you know, to Nick's point, uh, yeah, shows, film and television back in the back in the you know seventies, even into eighties and and nineties. Early and, 2000s. Even, and early 2000s, yeah. it, for the longest time, it, it looked a certain way. It was white centric, and people of color were uh, except for Fox, where you had like in living, uh, in living single and things like that. I mean, which I iron- which is super ironic. Yeah, yeah I was exactly. gonna say because it took me back for a second. Where I go, wait, wait, but it was, it was Fox yeah, was Fox the, was the Fox, only one. Fox used to be the edgy, yeah. like, and then UPN came out and then took over the, the edgy. No, it was WB I think first because they had that. Um, Unhappily ever after and and things like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which it was, was terrible. Ironic, which, it was, I loved that show. I'm sorry, I loved it. I know, I, I know why it. you love that show. But no, which, because the bunny was hilarious. Oh, I remember that one yeah, now. Yes, that, it was hilarious. I just didn't, the it premise was, a, was like it was a poor man's married with children. Yeah, it really was, and I still enjoyed it. But yes, that other reason too. <laughs> um, but on the topic of representation, um. And news this week because uh, we we mentioned over the the holidays last week that uh, John Madden passed and Betty yeah. White passed yeah and uh, another pillar they they seem to come in threes deaths you ever hear that deaths come in threes I've lived that so it's John Madden Betty White and Sidney 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 Poitier yeah. how did I miss that like yeah he died just yesterday, yesterday. Yeah. yeah oh because I've been offline for yeah. Man, yeah. that sucks. Yeah, I mean, he was ninety. He was, 90, he was 90, yeah, yeah. 94, I think. Yeah. He lived um, a nice long life. What, what a legend! What a life. yeah, for what sure. What a life that man lived. He he opened many eyes and many doors man. for, I mean, everybody that came behind him. I know that. I, I think one of his biggest fans is I think Denzel Washington yeah. always speaks incredibly yeah. highly. I mean, everybody did, but I mean Denzel like idolized him mm-hmm. and it was you know it was representation it was somebody that looked like him yeah. on screen in these major roles doing and knocking and, it out of the and, park yeah yeah so yeah. uh rest in peace sir that blows yeah rough week for i mean it, yeah the, i mean i know that they come in threes but th- those are three well, giants i exactly. just assumed the third was rob dying on the cruise well, well that works that was the first, yeah, that's cool. but we don't really count we it. We don't because, count that because he he was resurrected. Yeah, uh, from the, the boat he rose uh, on he the rose. third week. On the third week, he rose again. Yep, he rose out of the sea like Jason at the end of Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> Which was a that was a bad that was a badass way to end that. That I think was, it was uh, the second or second one or third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where she like they they sink him into the into Crystal Lake and they're like oh. Oh, well, he's finally gone. At the end, he just pops out. It's great, honey. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> hard transition. Hard transition, actually, because one of the things I want to... We, we've been talking about on the show... Um, really? 
So before the show started, we were before we hit record, I was talking about how, you know what's so cool is uh, listening to some of the other podcasts. I was listening to The Muck today, and I, and I heard of a new Patreon they had um, was Annette. And I'm like, that's really cool. Hey, that's, that's our Annette. That's our Annette. I call we claim her. So is she yeah. cheating on us? She's she cheating on us okay. with the mud. <laughs> yeah. She's cheating on us with Rude. the mud. But it's okay. Like that's really exciting. No, yeah. But that that brought up another conversation about talking about you know what the one thing we don't ever really do on our show is we don't talk about some of the feedback we get from our show, right? We like, we really don't. We don't really talk about we our show except for in a self deprecating way. Well that would also be a true way. Yeah. Self deprecation, <laughs> yes. right there. Yeah. Is it deprecation? Is, self, be is it self-deprecation if it's factual? It's, yeah, exactly. That's a great question. As, at least it's not self-defecation. Oh <laughs> man, <laughs> are you, you really, really self-defecating? Sh- you really, you really should Wait, like a regularly. If, yeah. if, you, if you're not self-defecating, do then we need to have a conversation? You need to check uh, your diet. Do you, no, need, I'm, do, I'm, you need some, do you need someone to stick their thumb up your bum to make sure everything's working? Hey, that's not a thumb. Yes, please. Okay. It didn't feel like a thumb. Oh, 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 uncomfortable. <laughs> anyway, it's going back to the... <laughs> it would be. Uh, Joe, take it away. <laughs> what happened? No, we... Uh, so, yeah, Annette is one of our patrons, and um, she left us some great, pretty great feedback. Um, said, guys, love this week's episode again. Great DS9 content, fantastic discussion, and the reflections on parenting fathers, which we are. Uh, was so open and wonderful, a healthy perspective. DS9 is not only getting better through the coming seasons, so are you. Hope you're always staying healthy and well. Happy New Year. Which, thank you. Yeah, thank you very absolutely. much. Absolutely. Those are words I needed to hear. Words of affirmation. And there was, uh, she, there was, she made, so she commented, she also commented on, uh, we actually get a fair amount of comments on our Patreon um, yeah. episodes. Uh, and, and she mentioned, on the latest one, a story about uh, the hundredth monkey. I didn't. You I never heard that. No. Okay. Do you? Are you aware of that? I've heard I, in the past. I never heard heard that story before. No. But can you can you kind of explain what it is? It's basically it's like a threshold, right? Where if enough people are behind something, it it gain essentially it gains more recognition. Is that kind of the gist of it? In a nutshell, yeah. Yeah. And I, I guess she called me the hundredth monkey. I don't know if that's. I don't. I don't know how to take that. She's saying that before you were here, Nick and I sucked. No, I think, <laughs> just kidding. No, I I'm just kidding. No, the the show was great without me, and it will be great without me again. Whoa! Are you, are you leaving? No. Big announcement. Big announcement. <laughs> Big announcement. Remember that third host we were looking for? That fourth host? We need a third now. <laughs> we no. just we just need somebody. But we do get good. We we get feedback. Um, on Patreon, we get feedback on yeah. Twitter. Yeah. Not so much on Instagram. I think you could, we get people laughing. Yeah, mostly laughing. Yeah. You, I think you have a lot of fun on Instagram. I, I goof yeah. off on Instagram yeah. a lot. It's a, it's a yeah, lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it is. I think it is. So, well, anyways, it's great to hear some good feedback. And we're, we're, we should make a point of playing feedback more often. Yes. Yeah, um, we should. So, I know that... Um, that was sort of in lieu of Toy Time with Joe. So there's no official... Wait, we weren't supposed to mention Toy yeah, Time with Joe. you said don't mention it at you all. You said don't mention it at all. You threw a fit before the... Boo! Boo! First of all, I said Nick don't mention it. Oh. Uh, it's my segment, so... Uh, anyway. It's my theme song. Oh, cool. <laughs> I have no part of it, so... Okay. Yeah, that's true. You, were, you recorded it. But I... Sure. So it's not... Did you no, I haven't watched it. It's not officially a toy time with Joe, but I do have something toy related to share. Okay. Oh, it's, it's taking a minute. Hold on. Let's... So I, I went oh, shopping no. oh, the no. other day, yeah. and um, yeah. Hot Wheels makes these like they're collectible die cast <gasps> um, oh. things, <laughs> and they're, but they're 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 they had one of the yeah. Batmobile from the bat the newest. Yeah, Batman. you sent it. You sent it. And I was like, damn, that's ten. It was ten dollars. Yeah. Which, I mean, maybe eventually I'll get it, but I didn't get it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but they do have regular, like the regular Hot Wheels. Oh, of that. Oh, the the that was still cool. Oh. I didn't see this until the other day, but it's still actually. It is. Pretty cool. Oh. No, it is. Yeah. So I got us. I got us each one because. Oh. Nick. Uh, 
Nick said he's done with the Batman until the movie releases, so I'm going to try to fit in the Batman to every episode until... Did Nick mention that he's also full of shit? Yeah, because yeah. I watched oh, no, no, the Bat and the Cat yeah. trailer. Oh my gosh. Which was great. That was a fantastic trailer. I'm telling you, every everything that they've done since announcing uh, Robert Pattinson has... has they knocked it out of the park. It's been better and better. It's made yeah. it more and more... Well, it's Matt Reeves, man. It's going to be good. So that comes out March 5th. So my question to you, Jeff, Fourth, is, yes. Fourth, I believe. is, yes, are we doing a whole episode dedicated to that movie alone? No, we. Can, I don't think we can do a whole episode dedicated to it. I mean, I think our our, uh, our know, beginning man. of the show can be about it. Uh, well, show know. meeting, bro. All yeah, right, all right. Meeting. Maybe, <laughs> maybe this is our second podcast that we create. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, stay uh, tuned. Stay tuned. Hey, we have we have more podcasts. Another, we have another podcast. Yeah. All right. Is it, a, what is it going to be? Film? Is it film <laughs> review or what? I mean, what are what are we doing? Hey, is everyone, just, we're going to be right back. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to listen to some advertising. We should do a specific pod askew. We will be right back. Pod askew, a founding member of the, the uh, Odd Media, Pod Media Network. Network. Yay oh, for Potaskew. Hey, speaking of feedback, I forgot to mention this one. Uh, we got some pretty decent feedback on our harmonizing. Did we? Yeah. It was, what, it was, uh, who, so, who said something about that? Who was so that? So um, I think Lauren from Beardell said something on Twitter. It was Twitter, a C augmented chord or which, something like that. Who, what, the, I don't even know what the Good fuck for it you. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No idea. Uh, yeah, you, no. I yeah. don't know. But, uh, Russ also said, Russ from, uh, Infectious Groove also said that it was spot on. Like, it was... Like dead nuts, harmonizing. Which I was never ever attempting that before. Which yeah, behind the curtain, we didn't know we weren't we didn't plan it. We didn't know we were gonna do it, uh, and we've never done anything like that before. And it was just you and, you you just said it kind of off like off mic a little bit like kind of churchy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and Nick was like, well, let's harmonize, and we just we all just three of us. It. We just did it. We know we know where we're supposed to be. The question is, can we ever do it again? No, we're not going to do it. <laughs> no, again. I don't. I, th- I think we could. I think we could. But that's our it, second podcast. We could talk. We could harmonize random things. No. Oh no! Yeah, we're going to have a uh, chamber music podcast, yeah. and we're just going <laughs> to sit there and sing to our fans the whole time. To our fan. All right, for the uniform, we have an episode where Cisco can't let it go. He's Jean Valjean. Let it go. Jean Valjean! Well, he's not Jean Valjean, he's Javert. Yep. Yep. Um, so basically, Eddington's back. Back again. Um, and he's being a jerk. He's a Maquis jerk, right? So he betrayed Starfleet, right? He, uh, he, uh, he basically uh, went, he uh, jumped ship from the Federation to the, uh, the Maquis, we know that. And cisco has been pursuing him for eight months. Um, but Eddington seems like he's always one step ahead of him. He's able to, uh, Cisco's about to capture him, and then Eddington drops a big, uh, big computer virus in and basically, uh, strands the Defiant. Defiant gets back to Deep Space Nine, um, and they're trying to bring it back, uh, up to par, but here's the thing. Cisco's ready to go back out and, uh, get Eddington, but, huh, he gets reassigned. Uh, Captain Sanders is back. Colonel Sanders. What's the matter, Captain? You chicken? Uh, Colonel Sanders is back. Uh, he takes charge of everything. Anyways, uh, they try to intercept Eddington, but uh, they get their butts kicked too. So the Defiant goes out, and because uh, Cisco can't let it go, and the ship is basically limping out in the space. They're basically running the ship like a submarine now, right? Like they have, to, which is really cool. I agree. It's yeah. really cool. Oh my gosh, they need to do that every episode. Uh, it's basically like a submarine now, and they're chasing Eddington. And and Cisco realizes that Eddington is is goading him and, and mocking him all along, saying he's Yaver and he, you know. And Cisco says, you know what? I need to embrace that villain role. And basically decides to firebomb a whole planet just to capture Eddington, and he does. And that's the episode, which is freaking nuts. This the guy a, commits a war crime, and we're like, a, yay, Cisco! This was a good ass episode. He commits a war crime. Oh. He destroys a planet. He didn't destroy the planet. He, he made did. it inhabitable. Inhabitable. Well, inhabitable. In, inhabitable. Thank you. For humans. <laughs> yes. He committed a war crime. To Eddington making an, a planet inhabitable. Oh, can I, why can't I say that? You, word? Inhabitable. Inhabitable. Jesus Christ. Inhabitable. 
inhabitable so for Cardassians. But you're right. It was. It was. Can can we? No. Off off the jump. Is <laughs> Eddington really wrong in this episode though? Is he? No, really, he's this, not. This is, is he really, is he he really is. the bad? I mean, he's he is billed as the bad guy, but is he? No, because they build. Actually, Cisco said it. I need to become the bad guy. Well, yeah, but I mean, your 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 mind has been led to distrust and dislike Eddington. Well, the reason why they make Eddington a bad guy is like he's like goading Cisco, and he's basically doing the mustache twirling, and like that's the only thing that really makes him evil. Like his the Maquis have a really good point. Right, like yeah. they have a legitimate claim. Right, they've lost their, t- you know, they they've lost their territory because of a stupid charter that mm-hmm. they have no part of, and they're being asked to move, and they don't want to move. That's their land. Um, so Cisco says, "You don't want to move? Boom, it's on fire now." Which was, but like, I mean, we we've talked about. We, we've talked about his questionable decisions a number of times on, on this podcast. This one's up there. It is It is up there. <laughs> it might be number one well, I right think now. this is number one, and, and he's got more coming. He's got I some mean, more. I mean, I was... Be cool. Be cool. There's a really good one. In in all of the Cisco's, Cisco letting his emotions make the decisions for him, I think this is tops the cake. Well, this, this, this was like... He was fucking pissed the whole episode. Well, when he's... I thought he was faking it at first. I thought, like, when they firebombed the planet, I thought he'd be like... Well, actually, I can disable it, and they're gonna all be fine, right? But he's like, no, no, he's no, like, I, no did. I did it. And here's and a, load another. And here's another question: the crew goes along with it. Well, they're like, following orders. They're following orders. They all looked at him like he was crazy, but yeah. then he said, "Do it." Well, yeah, because he told Warp to do it, and then he screamed at Warp to do it. Like but Warp was like, "What?" Uh, but sorry, that, what? That, see, these are all really interesting points, right? Because. This is the Federation. They have higher ideals. And if a captain is so far gone where he's asking you to commit these things, the ideals of the Federation are instilled in all the other officers that they would they would go against that order. Like, Worf would have gone against Picard if Picard would have said something like that. Why do they not go against Cisco? Is it something about how charismatic Cisco is? Is it because Cisco appeals to their emotional side and they get it? Like, what is it about Cisco that makes these people want to commit terrible things in his name? Did you watch the scene where he's hitting the punching bag? Yes. Yeah. They're deathly afraid of him. Because I was watching him in that scene going, man, this guy's intense. Yeah. That was a great scene. That I, was a I great love that scene. scene. I love that scene. Great scene. They were, they were afraid of uh, Picard, too, but in a different way. Different, I don't know. Different way. But I think... Do you think Picard? Do you, do you think Picard would have done what Cisco did? Not a million years. Are there any know? other captain... The line must be drawn. Ha! Is it? Kirk might have. No. No? no. I said might have. Jane would have just blew up the planet. Unless it was Cleons. Yeah. If it was Cleons, let them die. Let them die. Oh, we gotta get through the movies still. I, I can't wait to watch Undiscovered them. Country. With Joe, man. There was, uh... The, I have, so I have, I have one nitpick here, and it was there was so much techno babble in this episode. I think that's what's okay with Star Trek. They need the techno babble. And, and which is funny, because in years past, I've, I've argued that... Yeah. And here's why I say this. I, it, at points, it, it was just like... Ooh. This has to do with me watching Discovery now, right? Discovery has gotten rid of all technobabble, and it's all just... It's just it's just melodrama all the time. There was a more recent episode where they did use the technobabble, and I'm like, thank you. Thank you for bringing back some science to it. See, Deep Space Nine hasn't used a ton of technobabble, like Voyager or, or yeah. Next Generation, which I appreciate. They've used it sparingly. Well, they, absolutely they have, but they kind of have to. They're... Scientists in space yes. in a fictional world, they, yeah. you kind of have to. Yeah. And some of the techno battle here wasn't god awful. No, no, I don't mean. I didn't mean it was. I just meant there was a lot. Like there was a lot coming at. Like yeah. there were scenes where it was like all techno babble and they're all back and forth. And I was like, can we slow down? I'm I'm stupid and well, I'm, I'm I'm like in, intellectually when, stupid. When and Star Trek stupid inducers, too. You don't know. We don't know what that means. It's just you know. You gotta I'm going for the ride. Yeah, but I'm an idiot. I'm assuming everybody knows what that means except for me. No, no one knows. Yeah, we all do. Actually, you're an idiot. Oh, I know. Like Polaron emitters and, and those are shield generators. Right now, I'm like, what the what the hell is all this? I thing? know more than I should. Yeah. See, I don't know anything. Oh, well, the polar uh, emitters are actually in the station. Well, when I, when I'm like, oh, that's a phaser. I know what that is. <laughs> that's a gun. Torpedo. That's a pew pew. Yeah, he said <laughs> torpedo. <laughs> but he said quantum torpedo. Quantum. Yeah, what the hell is that? It's it's uh, the next level torpedo. Oh. It's better than the plasma torpedoes. Yeah, what's the, that? I don't know. There's no plasma torpedoes. Damn. Those uh, the defined as plasma phasers. Yeah. 
So okay, so going let's, <laughs> such a nerd. So going back to Cis- actually, so going back to Cisco, <laughs> I, I was thinking about this watching the episode. They they will go to great lengths for this guy, right? They will go to criminal lengths for him, for him, because he's gone there for but, them. I think that's what I just realized. That. Sorry yeah. to take, but yeah, well they they know he he they know that he's got their back no matter what. Obviously, yeah. But at the same time, he's so easily duped. Uh, this episode, because he's, this one. he's emotional. I know, but that's a big weakness. Especially but because, Eddington, be sh- because Eddington knew how to how to play on that. Yeah, if, you, but if you know his weakness... You've never been duped. I'm not, I'm undupable. I've oh. been duped more than once. So, I, I, can, I can get it. Listen, oh, I do the dupe. Oh, you're duped, because you haven't gone back and listened to our episodes. <clears throat> we cut out everything you say. <laughs> You've been duped, my You friend. think you're this podcast, but you're, you're not. not. Yeah. You're not. Oh. Actually, you like like after we're leaving, we're like, bye, Joe, and you get in your car and drive away. I pull back like, up in the driveway, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, let's record for real now. It's just <laughs> clever. Actually, we, yeah. we uh, pipe in Jason in your absence. Yeah. <laughs> you just have him re-record. <laughs> yeah. You, you transcribe my, whatever I said on the show, and then have him read the lines over it. Yeah, it's yep. pretty fantastic. Like a made-for-TV movie where they where they re-edit the swears. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so going back to our <laughs> previous episode where like ends justify the means, right? And like Kira's episode where she firebombed the Cardassians because they were attacking her, and like our argument was sometimes you have to get dirty to to to, yeah. beat, to beat the bad guys. And I said, well, but then you're the bad guy. Like it defeats the whole point. This is very similar right now with Cisco, right? Like. You're supposed to be the Federation. You're supposed to have higher ideals. And are there a lot of Marquis, 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 Marquis on that planet who are are part of the resistance and are, who are doing terrible things? Absolutely, there probably are. Are there a lot of children and innocent people on that planet too? Yeah. And you've just destroyed their home world and given them nowhere to go. They have nowhere to go. Fuck them. Yeah, but like, this is <laughs> you're a Federation captain. You are better than this. Do I think it's going to the extreme? Yes, I do. First, let me say that. But we get into the argument of Man of Steel, right? So Man of Steel, he has to break Zod's neck to get him to stop killing people, right? Yes. Yeah. Eddington was going to go after more and more and more and more and more planets. Mm -hmm. Does that justify, does his action there justify that stopping? So one planet... Because he got the warheads and he got Eddington. It's it's the greater good. What what is the greater good? What is the greater good? It doesn't mean should it's, there be it con- doesn't mean it's ideal. Yes. It just seems like there should be consequences there for should his be. behavior. There, but there absolutely. won't be, which is fine. I mean It's off screen. Yeah, it's off screen. <laughs> it, it was is this the episode where at the end um Jadzio was made the comment about um what's the Federation gonna say or she he didn't file something in his report and he said, Oh, I, I knew there was something I forgot to do. Yeah. So he's well, so not only is he my, committing war crimes, he's, he's like, falsifying records. records. Falsifying records. I mean, this guy's a this guy's a nightmare. So, but <laughs> that's, we all. But we all. Can we, you imagine the insurance policy on this man? But we've all said on this. We've stuff. all said on this podcast. We would we would probably pick him as our number one captain. We would want to. Well, you especially serve. because he would go above and beyond always. Right. Yeah. But the, he's going to put you in these positions. But then where all of a sudden you're, you're like. Did we just commit genocide? Yeah. I think we did. <laughs> was, like, I'm it was, pretty sure he knew they could get off the planet once he launched those. It was genocide torpedoes. light. It was genocide light. It was geno- Diet yeah. genocide. I don't think he thought he was actually wiping out the people on the planet that he would have died. All right. Uh, let's, put this, let's put this in real world equivalents. Let's try to figure out an example of this. Like, Rob has, <laughs> Rob and Joe have a, 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 a tiff going on. Joe's threatening. Stop it. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> Rob. Momoa, Stop. man. Goddamn yeah. Momoa. Gosling. Joe's threatening to, to firebomb Westland. And, and Joe lives in, in Trenton. All right? And and then we say, to, Rob says, you know you what? You just Canton Westland because it's real. Uh, well, whatever. What did I say? I said Trenton. Tre- Trenton is... This is legit the worst analogy I yeah. think I've ever heard already. <laughs> Regardless... When Joe threatens to blow up your neighborhood, so you you say to him, okay, well, I'm going to blow up your neighborhood if you try to blow up Are my neighborhood. Are children? And you actually do blow up his neighborhood, but you get him. Does that make you the good guy? No. No. You're a bad guy. But I also killed a lot of people in that instance. No, like, they, the people get out. They lose their house. Oh, they, they lose do. everything. They lose everything. They get insurance money. 
Did he bomb them or <laughs> did he bomb them or gas them? He gassed it, right? He ruined the planet, yeah. right? Yeah. He ruined the planet for So you basically make it impossible for anyone to enter Westland. For humans. The dogs can still live there. Dogs yeah. can still which is what? So really it only affects but one, it only affects one race. Who cares? <laughs> it l- listen, it's genocide light. Oh it's, here's the question, because the Maquis aren't all humans either. No. Remember there's Vulcans? So the Vulcans are living there now. The Vulcan Marquis, no, actually, what they th- didn't they say at the end, end of the episode that basically they swapped planets? Maybe, yeah. That the Cardassians who got yeah alienated moved yeah. to that planet, yeah. and vice versa. So now, I mean, they're still able to live there, and they're now all they do is just like smells weird here now. Yeah. <laughs> you smell that? It smells like methane. I don't know. But they're, they're still like living there. They're, they're just like trimming their trees and stuff. They're like, yeah. I'm going to work today, but it does smell weird. You, you notice? You're like, someone forget to do It's a lot yeah. quieter. Did our neighbor Steve move out? Where's Steve at? He hasn't been Steve, here. No, Steve's dead. He's a human. He's dead. Yeah. That's the smell. They're yeah, rotting in their homes. The smell is Steve. The smell was Steve. Was Steve. No, it still is. No it one's touching him. No one's going towards him. All right, so real quick before we move on from this episode. I think there's a lot more to talk about. No, yeah, there is. There is a lot more. Well, there could be a lot more to talk about. Are we going to keep talking about it? Because I wanted to talk about the the Defiant as basically a submarine battle, like which is fantastic. Yeah. And how they had to like, so the the way they were passing along commands was a little silly. Like you know, like Nog has to be the one guy doing it. It was a yeah. little weird, but like it was still kind of cool. It was cool. A simple cool. voice makes sense in that instance where there's all that chaos going on. Yeah, and he's got those special ears. It was cool gloves. to see Nog like in. Like in Starfleet doing stuff. Yeah, kind of cool. exactly. He's getting there, right? I think this. I think the submarine battles and, and when they do that, that's something that D, at least Deep Space Nine does really well. Yeah, that they have done really well so far in this series. Building that suspense, and that's also going back to our fantastic review of the Wrath of Khan. We talked a lot about that, about how it was like a slower paced battle. And every decision that they made mattered, right? Everything that they did had a yeah. point to it. A lot of patience in that. And that was the same thing with, with DS9 here, with the Defiant, right? It was really cool. I, I dug it. I wish it would stay that way, but it's not going this, to. This was a pretty intense, like, tensely paced episode. They did a nice job filming it and everything, where they kept that tension. Well, and they kept yeah. building it with, especially with Cisco. His anger kept boiling over, and you're like, okay, this is as angry as he's gonna get. Nope. No. Yep. <laughs> nope. Nope. You, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. God, that's an awesome. <laughs> that's an awesome delivery. What, I know it's overreacted, but man, God, that was good. You betrayed your uniform. That that exchange yeah. when, they, when he, he he's like, you betrayed your, and they said, you betrayed your uniform. Yeah. Or so did you, or whatever. Yeah. So are, you're doing it right now. I think. Yeah. Said. But. The way Cisco just yelled that out, you could tell he's. Just, oh man, that was good. It was. Good. It was, was a really that, good scene. That was good. The oh, right oh, there, oh! They, this is the first time that they did the um, the hollow communicated. I hated it. Thing. You didn't I like hated it? that. I hated well, it. well, I so in the hated scene, it. Did, did you read the notes about why they did that? Because they wanted that. Name. I know why they did it. I, I know why because they wanted to have that that one on one as opposed to through a view screen. Yeah. Because... Which I could appreciate doing it, but it just. It was just very convenient that he's like, oh, good thing we have one of these on our ship, too. Like, well, it was, like... Very convenient. It would, have been, it would have been less tense if I had done it through a view screen rather than one-on-one. And I don't recall yes. them using this anymore. One more time. Yeah, one more time in the entire okay. of the series. I, 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 it was fine. I, I appreciate that they wanted to make it a bit more tw- what they thought would be 24th century uh, correct. A lot of my issue with a hollow communicator is that it doesn't fit on the Defiance bridge. The design of the bridge does not benefit that communicator. If there's a different way they could design it where it fit more naturally and, mm-hmm. and cinematically, yeah. mm-hmm. I'd probably have less issue with it. Is but, it. You feel like it was too claustrophobic? Yeah, it just didn't work. Him turning small, around and going on it. Because it it's a smaller bridge, right? Yeah, and it just did not work. That, yeah, that was I, my issue. Where I, 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 thought it, I thought... I appreciated it for I, the for the scenes. Well, I appreciate what they what the, why they were doing it. Yeah, but the concept and, and the way it worked, I didn't care for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was I think it was a Ronald D. Moore yeah uh, thing, and th- they wanted to do it because he was like it's a twenty fourth century and we're still communicating mainly through screens. It just didn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, it Especially when they have hollow emitters, like in Discovery, that they yeah. use hollow communicators 
but it works better because of the, the way it fits on that set piece. Yeah, on right. a fine set piece, it just does not work visually. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, nerd. I would. I wish um, Cisco would have got up and tried to strangle Eddington and tried to like, throw a punch at it, like kicked it, kicked yeah. it the air or something. Or he gone to the holodeck, made a simulation of Eddington, just beat the living snot like out of it. Like that's the punching bag the whole yeah. time, just beating. Like a picture of his face is on the punching bag. Why hadn't? Why wouldn't he do that? Because it's not a. Because you're. Committing assault? I, I don't know. I got nothing. It's an I'm sure court, court can set him up with a hollow sweep with anybody, right? Yeah. I will say that's one of the better because episodes of Star Trek Voyager with the Herogen where they, they created, they had a whole hollow emitter yeah. and they made it so that the the fake creatures felt pain and could learn. And that was a pretty cool, mm. they evolved. It was really cool. Anyways, Voyager sucked, but there was some good stuff in it. <laughs> um, all right. So anyways... Next episode? I mean, we could talk yeah, for a long I, time about yeah, this one. I mean, yeah. we, we, we had discussed ad nauseum uh, Cisco's very questionable decision making when uh, emotions are involved. When, when, his, when it's personal, uh, he definitely will make some very questionable and probably wrong decisions. Uh, decisions that he can, I, I like how he kept on saying, like, uh, you know that he's gonna say he's gonna bring that up in his court martial proceedings. I'm like, dude, you what is what are they gonna bring up at your court martial <laughs> proceedings? I mean, well, the, the opening arguments are gonna be just ungodly. Yeah, I mean the charges are he he's racking he's really racking up some, oh, you, some court martial you, you just charges. Wait, just you wait, my friend. Um, so was he more angry he got duped by Eddington or that they got betrayed? Uh, portrayed as uniform. Um, I, I would say the guy was right too. I think that, that he's right in some sense. Yeah, I would say seventy thirty. I think there uh, there's a there's an ego to it where it's like I got duped and it doesn't feel good and everybody everybody saw me get duped too. It's not like he beat him, you know. He got took off the case. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think there's a bit of pride there that is. Certainly a factor. Um, I feel like Cisco def at times has an affinity for the uniform and for Starfleet, but through his actions, he has proven that he's willing to set that aside uh, for personal vendettas, mm -hmm. which make me less inclined to believe he was that angry that he betrayed the uniform mm -hmm. because. Uh, Cisco That's has point. Cisco has betrayed the uniform a number of times when it benefits him. But when but it, has Cisco betrayed it when it was beneficial to the uniform? When his when his betrayal was technically beneficial to the Starfleet, the, the, Starfleet? the greater good Starfleet, <clears throat> which in, in an upcoming episode, some of his decisions yeah benefit Starfleet. Yeah, well, I mean we discussed that. Yes, but it doesn't mean that the betrayal is still I know, there. I know. So you can't really get. I mean, you can you can be the upset. Means don't just or the no it, by the gene. No, no. I'm just saying when when you even even if you're betraying Starfleet for the good of Starfleet, however you do that, um, your you know your upsetness or your um, you know you can't be offended that somebody else betrays Starfleet. Yeah. You. I mean, you can, but you can't be that upset about it. Yeah, I think he was disproportionately upset about the betrayal of the uniform for somebody who has committed war crimes. You think he's but I think, no, I think... The, to a certain extent. The reality is, though, he's gone... He's so emotional about it that he doesn't see how what he's doing is on the same level as Eddington. That's the problem. Which is what we, we just had this with Kira. Yes. And, and, she, um, she's incapable of seeing the yeah. wrongness of her decision-making. Why are they getting along? It is, but I mean, like, that's the thing. And I think the Federation, though, especially in this situation, would turn a blind eye to what he did. They'd say, you know what, like, yeah, you did, well, what you did was wrong. Here's like, the thing, they'll never be, know about it. Yeah, but, I mean, and this is very true to what happens in, in the current world, right? Like, there's, there's terribly evil things that are committed um, in order to prevent other evil things. And then we yeah. kind of, like, ignore the terrible stuff that we did. To, to stop it, yeah, right. Like you know, you think about World War II. Like we 
carpet bomb civilian cities. Mm -hmm. Like there was no, um, there was no uh, strategic significance to some of these cities, but we knew it would crush the will of the people. Yeah. So we did it anyways. Um, it's... Did the end justify the means? I, you know, Maybe. I don't know. Like, that's not our call to make. I mean, was Germany committing some mass crimes? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Oof. It's. I think. I think people want to want to believe that there is, um, you know, a, a, a right or wrong, like a, a a holy right and a holy wrong, and there's nothing in between. Whereas Cisco lives in the in between. The gray area is where Cisco makes a lot of his decisions. That's why they switched to the gray uniforms. Yes, I agree. But I, I mean, kind of like that though. The uniforms. Yeah, or then he, the great uniforms. I love them. Yeah. I love them. I didn't. I didn't mind. I'm. I'm starting to come around to them. Yeah, it's fine. They're... I'm just happy they finally got Cisco's combat in the right friggin' spot the entire episode. Because it was on the upper part. Yeah, that was driving. They me insane. finally moved. It was only the one episode though, right? Two. Like it was that. two. Driving me insane. All right. All right. Calm down. <laughs> okay. Now we. All right, Nick. We can move on to the next episode. Yeah. Purgatory show. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Purgatory. Will do. Uh, the Deep Space Nine picks up a mysterious coded message. They bring in Garrick to analyze it. Garrick lies to them and says it's nothing, but it turns out it's his mentor, Tane, uh, saying that he's still alive and he's been captured. Um, Garrick it convinces Cisco to let him go to the Gamma Quadrant with Worf um, to, uh, to figure out what's going on. As they're on their way, they get captured by the gem. Ha -ha! They take uh, Worf and Garrick prisoner, um, and it turns out uh, uh, the Dominion is coming. It's time. War's coming, man. They had a whole fleet. They're ready to go through that wormhole and destroy some crap. Um, so Cisco sees only one choice. We got to blow up the wormhole temporarily. It's going to temporarily seal it. Um, so anyways, Worf and Garrick are in that detention center. They find Tane. Turns out Tane is, uh, baby daddy of, uh, Garrick. So now things are starting to make sense. Wow, this is why he loves Tane so much. Tane is mad that he gets captured, but by the end of the episode, when he dies, he claims him as a son, uh, in a very, uh, abusive manner, actually, because he's still a jerk the whole time. And he's like, remember when I was proud of you when you were five? Like, that's... <laughs> that once? Yeah. Like, what? Um, and There's also... Oh! Oh, you know who else we have here? Martok. The real Martok is here. And, whoa, big surprise, Julian Bashir. It's been a changeling at Deep Space Nine since they've got their new uniforms. It's been a changeling the whole time for at least a month. Um, episode ends when the, when uh, Deep Space Nine shoots a particle beam at the wormhole. But guess what? It was sabotaged. I wonder who sabotaged it. Probably Bashir. Changeling Bashir. And the Dominion starts pouring through. And so begins the Great War. So on Wednesday. Woo! So on Wednesday. This I sent Nick a text. Yeah. I, I knew this episode was coming. I also knew it was the second of our two episodes we were watching. Yeah. So I sent Nick a text. I said, hey, make sure you don't mention that this ends on a cliffhanger before we record. Yeah. Don't ruin it for Joe, because I want to see how much he hates me. And part two on has Saturday. a different name, too. Yeah, it has a different name as well. I'm aware. What is your thoughts <laughs> at the end of this episode? I feel betrayed. <laughs> I really do. Did I betray your uniform? Yes. I just... It said... <laughs> Listen, okay, so I'm watching the episode, and the 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 story arc with uh, Tane and Garrick ends, and you hear Cisco come on and say, um, Stardate, and I'm like, okay, there's like... Two minutes, two minutes, two and a half minutes. I think it was two thirty mm -hmm. left in the episode. And I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna wrap this up. That was a good episode. <laughs> and they start. <laughs> there's less, another it's scene a starts. Good solid episode. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? What, what's happening? What, what are we doing? There's my anxiety builds. I'm like, the clock is running down. There's like, no, there's You're like running 90, out of time. Yeah, we're at like ninety or a hundred seconds left in this fucking episode now. And I'm like, what, what are we? What's happening? And then I'm like, there's like 30 seconds left in this episode, and all of these uh, warships are starting to come through the wormhole. I'm like, what is going on? How is this episode going to end? And it says, to be continued. And I about flipped. I'm like, what? 
wh why are we not watching? Then I'm like, wait, am I supposed to watch the third? Are we doing three episodes? No one said, no one said to do three episodes. We can't do that. I, I was just so, I'm like, I, why, why are we waiting? I want to watch the next episode. Did you watch the next episode? No. It was a good, it was a good cliffhanger ending though. That was an amazing cliffhanger ending. But I was like, could what you, is happening? Why? Could you imagine having to wait? And I feel like this probably would have fallen under, like, you know, when they have a cliffhanger right before Christmas time and then you wait like two months. This was February 10th. Oh, it was. Okay, so the next episode was the next week. Maybe. I, I, I haven't looked up. I don't know. I didn't look it up there. I would, I would assume. I mean, you're in mid February. It's probably just. There's really no. Sport. There's, I think they skip a week in February. I don't know if it was that week. Though. Oh, I'll find out right now. Again, give me a second. So. Yeah, that was... Uh, yeah, it was. It was the next week. Inferno By Inferno's Light is the next week. Okay. It was, so, yeah, it was... It was a great cliffhanger, but I'm... Like, I'm, I'm building up with anxiety as as the seconds are ticking off of this episode, and there's, like, way more story happening mm -hmm. than than the usual, like, star date, everything is fine, and everything wrapped up nicely, blah, blah, blah. And then it's, like, you know, the, the, the end credits, and they do the the scene of the the station rotating in space and i was like oh. mm -hmm. but then they're like boom wars come but holy shit like all it's getting real these last two episodes were were great. more of the war center like building the war story which i think i i don't know about the last recently i've been critical about how they built that this war is happening but nothing has really happened in this in the episodes like to keep my interest in the war it's more it's almost like oh yeah there's a war happening out there where now it's like now it's a war it's a conflict yeah but disagreement it, at that point but it was, you could see that it was building there was conflict there was disagreement there were there was conflict but it became uh it, they wanted you to believe that it was becoming something bigger but they weren't telling the story of what it was becoming and now there's now they were starting to do it um so I appreciated that these were two war-centric episodes, mm -hmm. and essentially the beginning of the war. Now, the, yeah. the beginning of the actual war, because it looks like uh, it looks like the uh, Dominion meets business. Oh, Did yeah. you guys catch the two slight references to prior episodes? So they mentioned Doctor Lenara Khan of Trill mm -hmm. found a way to close the wormhole without harming the aliens. Yes, yes. I... that's Dax's boo from a private private. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Because they and, were doing the experiment. Yeah. Okay. And when all those ships were coming out of the wormhole, what, do you guys have any idea what that looked like? Locust from Rapture. Oh. oh. Okay. Yes. When he was having the, the, the visions? Yeah. That yes. looked like locust coming out of the, the wormhole. Yes. Mm. I like it. I like that. Yes. Nice. I like those little, those I, little I, tidbits. I, was, I heard them say Khan from Trill, and then Dax says, yeah, she's always come up with clever things. And I'm like, and I'm saying yeah. an archon, an archon. Yeah. Is that? And so I had to look, actually look it up to make sure I was thinking correctly. And it was. That's incredible. This episode reminded me that there has been very little Garrick lately. Yeah, there like, has like, been. Very yeah. little. Very little. And his episodes are always very intriguing. They're very good. But the last one you rated, rated below a 6.5. Because they're not, I know, because they're not using him often enough. It's, it's a use it or lose it, and he's losing it. You know, the thing is, too, like, this was a great episode for Garrick because I never understood his obsession with Tane. You're like, what the heck? This guy is a... Yeah. He, he's terrible towards you. Well, now we know. It's his father, and he's is been striving for his really father's his affection. Father? Or... Yes. Well, when they first had that exchange when that when he was dying, I was like, it was just like, you know, a father figure kind yeah, of thing. that's what I thought. But at the then, end, when he said, you know, I should have killed, killed your, your mother, mother yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to guess that it was really his daddy. Yeah. I'm going to guess really Taint was his daddy. Yeah, I mean, he was Taint, though. You know, you know, it's so sad, though, because here, like, again, like, his final story is, when you were five and we did this, I was proud of you. And it's like, that's the last, like, it's it's like a backhanded compliment, right? The well, if you were a guy who served all this time in the secret society of spies and you're meant to be hard and if you showed weakness, you'd be killed or... Yeah. And your whole purpose was to make Cardassia great and... That sounds, uh, anyway, you probably would be closed off from anybody you quote unquote loved. That would be a liability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. The thing I didn't like was, I, I thought it was a somewhat tender moment at the end of his life. Mm -hmm. But the way he ended it, 
because his the last two words he said were that day. That I was day. Proud I was of very you. proud of that you day. That, that day. day. And, then and it's died. like it's like I was very proud of you. And there was a a longer than traditional pause. And I was like, okay. And he said that day, and I was like, what a dick. Yeah. Well, like it, fighting it to the end. Yep. He, he just couldn't couldn't give even at the very end couldn't give Garrick the satisfaction of a father's approval. Well, and that's the whole thing. And it was a moment in time he was this proud is of. This an him. abusive man, yeah. right? This is an egocentric man. He doesn't care about. He doesn't care about uh, Garrick. No, not at all. Doesn't care about anything but himself. Is it? Isn't that how all Cardassians? I mean, not all Cardassians, but isn't that? How, isn't that the culture? Is, is well, they're very supposed egocentric. to. Well, they're supposed to care about their family. Like family is supposed to be everything to a Cardassian. If you look at those prior episodes. Um, I know it, it's, it goes, we're dealing with the military wing, though, which are very right. different creatures. Well, Dukat up until Zial was saying about how family's everything, and he was torn about Zial, but ultimately decided was not. Kill her. But decided not to because right. she was family. But then once she chose Garrick, essentially in this episode, then he's like, "Well, you're not family anymore, I guess." And that's why he got all pissy. Yeah. He's being. I mean, I would. Would you, Would you approve of your daughter dating Garrick? I mean, Gold Ducat knows and I'm not, really I, truly well, what Derek was. And I, I, listen, I'm, I'm not really being facetious. No, it's so because that, he, because he is kind of a questionable character. Well, yeah. that's the thing. Gold Ducat knows knows who he is and yeah. what he's done. So no. What, so like, I mean, yeah. I, I can't really fault Gold Ducat for the the no. way for the feelings he has about Garrick and maybe not wanting his 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 family or his daughter to be involved with somebody who is of his ilk. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, Gold Ducat did try to kill his daughter at one point. So I don't think he tried. He um, he planned to. He yeah. thought about it. Considered. Yeah. yeah. Thought about it. He would have if Kira wasn't there. Well, yeah, because she had to bring She talked him out of it. Yeah. But sometimes I mean, you need that other person there. Yeah, imagine Gold Ducat being the moral true. being the moral compass of this episode. <sighs> I, I I really I mean. The more I see him, the more I like Gul Dukat. Really? Yes. I don't know why. I, I like I, how they... I think I find him more endearing. I find him... He's intriguing. He is intriguing. And I know when Jason was here, we had the, the a, a bit of an in-depth discussion on... Oh, no, no, it wasn't Jason. It was... Um... Mike. Mike. Uh, we had a bit of an in-depth discussion on Dukat. And, like, is he genuine or is he... Yeah. I, I still sort of lean on the... He's sort of genuine in his um, reformation. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, I just I want to believe that he's a, he's better than his past, and that he's becoming better than his past. I know that I, but there is a part of me that feels like if given the opportunity, he would revert back to his past almost immediately. Oh yeah, I appreciate the writers trying to get you to sympathize somebody who they who we ultimately view, view as a villain. Yeah, I mean, we ultimately. Oh, he's a war criminal. He but they, they so is Cisco. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we idolize Cisco. This yeah. is the whole point, right? Like this goes back to what you were talking about the last episode. That there's not a black, there's not a white. It's all the gray. Yeah, Cisco's gray. Gold Ducat is too, right? You see the good in him. Physically, he's gray. He, he, physically, he is. <laughs> he he's, is. He's That's more true. Of a brown. No, he's, no, gray. he's gray. He's gray. Like gray. Is gray. mostly gray. Yeah, yeah it's gray. we'll get another view. Oh, he looks gray. Oh, other guy. Oh yeah, the war wharf is brown. Yeah. yeah. It's grayish. They're more yeah. of a silver foxish. Uh, I need you to sponsor me for Starfleet Academy. I was like, yes. Anyways. He just I love I love that he was like, you ha- lying is a skill and if you if you want to be good at it, you have to practice it. Yep. You can't let it I'm like, that's fucking true. That's true. I will say as a kid I was a master liar, and then the older I got, the less I lied, which means I'm not as good at yeah, it. You're terrible liar now. You gotta use that. I bet as a kid you were a master debater. Joe, kid. I respect you. See, <laughs> see, I see right through that. You're not still not good. You are my friend. Oh, really? No. I lied there. Did you, you see me. that? Did you, you see me. the lie? You got no, me. You didn't know. I'm really good. Yeah. And there were some good interactions in this episode. Like right now we see Ducat and Kira. Where he's like, yeah, and you be. Not, yeah. You not, let him talk to them. And now people. they hate each other again, which is great, because they go from... She always hated it. I mean, they always hated yeah. it. She'll, she she will, He did not hate her. No, he, he, did, wants he her. did not hate her. He wants her. Yeah. Uh, he has a half Cardassian, half Bajoran child, so he absolutely did not hate her. Nope. 
This isn't Kira's kid, though. I know, but what I'm saying okay. is... <laughs> he likes the Bajorans. He yeah. likes the Bajorans, yes. Uh, no, we're, we're, we're females. Kira, absolutely. There's, there's almost no existence where Kira will be sympathetic to a Cardassian. Can I talk about something very uncomfortable right now? This just came to my mind yes. about Star Trek. These are different species who are hooking up with each other and having babies. We do that on this planet, and you go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, they're humanoids, at least. Uh, yeah. What about Star Trek Six, where the person gets kicked in the knee? That was not his knee. Not everybody keeps their genitals in the same spot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. What would be the equivalent? Like a, like a gorilla? Jesus Christ. No. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, they're more humanoid than... They're more they're humanoid. Short. They're humanoid. Can you interact, converse yes. with a gorilla? Sign language. So we could, we could do a Star Trek episode with a gorilla. Yeah. Sure, why not? Yeah, sure, I mean, why not? If, if, if we replace Nick with a gorilla, I think our ratings will go through the roof. <laughs> to be fair, I'd rather listen to that. <laughs> It'd be a three-second podcast because he'd just rip all yeah. the shit out of here and just beat us <laughs> with Well, it looks like this episode's over. We gotta go. Yeah. Although, coincidentally, it might be our highest-rated highest, highest rated episode yeah. after we get bludgeoned to death. Yeah, they're going to want to watch the YouTube that Exactly. One. That's that's the YouTube week. Yeah. We actually get more than ten viewers. Yes! Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, I mean, to your point, yeah, the interspecies um, I mean, relationships are... Just kind of glossed over, huh? Yeah, I mean, you think about. It. I mean, is it just the? Most... But it, it's it, it's not. I don't know. I, I feel like it's a bit different than um, <laughs> than humans and animals. Yeah, because yeah, it's they a lot can't... different. Yeah, they can't. Yeah, it is, like it, it, it is if, if it, if don't it get were me wrong. It's if, it, if, it, if it were like next week, if it came out that there's fifteen different planets and species that are. Um, evolved that, that are evolved and, 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 and we we start mixing cultures and things there's going to be people who have relationships and end up with um mixed species children maybe i don't know i don't think it's possible personally but you know, you never know. maybe i don't know i don't know well, i don't you know, know about, you find out where there's i don't know are. about cross species pollination you got you got to find out where those where those genitals are you know? i don't know i don't know you bang you someone's find knee. out where those genitals are yeah, you got to bang someone's knee step 1 Anyways, anything else? Um, on this episode, I don't know. It was. I like this right, Martok. So... He's he's yeah. more level head. Like this isn't crazy Martok. This is a this is a reasonable Cleon, which is great. I love Bashir's back, and he, he even plays the character a little different. A little bit. Yeah. Um, I hate how they all of a sudden, though, turned the Bashir on the station into, like, a mustache twirling guy, though. They only did that for one scene, really, where, it was, where he brought the food or yeah. whatever. And he, you You're heard, a sandwich? And you, heard that, <sighs> and you heard that voice from the season one episode where it was just god-awful. I can't think of the name of it right now. Passenger, I think it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was a terrible but episode. But you heard that from... Hey, it's the, it's the Nebula from Star Trek Two. Oh. Nice. Uh, but... Uh, you heard that for a second. I'm like, oh no, they're not going to do this again, are they? And then they did not. No, no. But those, those were nice. Those were nice. Those were nice. Bits. Okay, so since we have just done a Garrick episode, I have, I have a, something I need to, that's been on my mind. Oh no. And I need, I need to get this off my chest. I think Odo is becoming my favorite character. Over Garrick. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I think it's, I think it's just that he is in the story more but hit Odo's and I know these aren't Odo episodes I know but last week we had a bit another one and his story arc has been so intriguing yeah um and enthralling and it's just it's incredibly captivating that I've just kind of I don't know. It's it's my favorite storyline in the whole show right now. It's an emotional storyline. Well, you know, you know. I think you said it best in there is that his story is evolving. Yeah. We're not really seeing that so much with with uh, Garrett. It's not that we're not getting different pieces to his story. Yeah. We are getting different pieces to his story. But him personally, he is the same Garrett that he was in episode one. Odo is not. Yeah, and right. I, so yeah, so Odo is on this trajectory where Garrick is 
like just pinned to the wall. This is Garrick. We don't know everything about him, and we're going to fill in some of the pieces, but that's who he is. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we find out about his father, and we find out uh, some things about, um, we, we find out a bit more of his context and backstory, but it doesn't really change the character. He's still Garrick. He's still exiled. He's still um, potentially a spy. He's right. still, you know, right. he's still all these things that he always has been. Odo is vastly different and has gotten better and worse in certain things, but has evolved yeah. as, evolved as a most, character yes. yeah. the yes. most of, of anybody. Absolutely. You know, if, you know, if I think about it real quick, I think if you only, if you look at the main cast, Chief O'Brien's probably the only one that hasn't really changed at least a little bit during this show. Uh, he's a little less cantankerous. Yep. But like, is he? Dax has changed. Yeah. Dax has changed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Kira has changed a lot. Julian's changed a lot. A lot. Cisco's changed. Yeah, he's he's really an asshole now. Where he was I mean, a little bit of an asshole yeah. the first episode. He was a, he was a bit more um, kind of like rah rah in the beginning, like lead in, a, in a more of a leadership role, like inspiring. Now yeah. he's like. We're, you'll do what I you'll do what I tell you to do because I tell you to do it. But the interesting thing about that is because the circumstances around him have changed as well. Oh, absolutely. So, things things are very more much more dire now, and um, they aren't as. It's not like oh hey we now now we have a station let's make it nice and let's do all these. Now it's like, you know, there's a war at at our feet. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so now these decisions have to be made. I'm going to be the one to make them because nobody else here has the balls to do it. Conversely. Next generation, who changed from season one to season seven? Uh, I mean, you could really say Spock because they changed. That would be the original series. Oh wait, wait, wait! Next generation, next yeah. generation. I'm sorry. Spock Junior. Spock Junior. Uh, Picard. Not a little bit. Not maybe not a not a lot at all. Uh, yeah, because he did, because he was he was the uptight captain the first uh, couple seasons, enough. and then he kind of like loosened up a little bit with his crew, and he was a little in bit in the last episode. No, he was some I, he, shit. Yeah, I mean, you're, that's a very good point. But that was also uh, something that was really important to Roddenberry, right? Well, that I, they were already evolved. They didn't need to grow. Well, the car was kind of perfect anyway. Yeah, it was. But I think maybe Riker a little bit. He got a little more, a little more mature. Yeah, but that was about it. Yeah, I, I think. And did anybody change in Voyager? Tim was still a Manson. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Belana Torres. Oh, yeah, you're right. Certainly yep. different. Um, the Doctor was very... The Doctor was very different by the end. Was he? Yes, he I'd was. have to watch it again. He right. was. Uh, seven and nine. Yeah, there was some growth. Okay. There was some growth. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think... I don't think O'Brien's changed very much. I don't think so either. I mean... I don't... I don't know that there is much for his character, to, unless, you know, I don't, unless there's, like, um, marital issues, or, I, I think, you know, the baby coming in was a storyline, but I don't think that really changed baby. him, necessarily. I, I didn't see any character change uh, with adding, you know, expanding the family. Yeah. Um, I think if, if the, the marriage dynamics or the family dynamics change in the next season and a half. Yeah. Two, two and a half seasons. Yeah. Has Quark changed? I th um I don't know that a little, he's a little bit. I don't know that he's changed. I think he has allowed us to see a bit more of his who he actually really um, is. Yeah. His okay. Not anti um, Ferengi views, but uh, views that maybe go against traditional Ferengi beliefs. Whereas in the beginning, I think he thought thought that he was just like this cutthroat Ferengi who's. Okay. All about profits. Okay. Where he, I think there's a bit more wiggle room in there. A bit more to him. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. All right. Let's rate. So him. just, uh, I just wanted to say that. Okay. Let's do it. All right. For the uniform. What we give? Mm. It? What I'm gonna give it. it? I'm gonna give it a seven point five. Whoa. I was low? not expecting that. I was that's low. Uh, that's lower than I expected you to go. Yeah, I did an eight. Yeah, I did an eight point five. Actually, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go eight. No, you can't go back. No, I did it for you last week. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go. go. I'm gonna I'm gonna swap them. We clarified that only swap. I can do that. Are you doing? You're gonna swap them? 
So in Purgatory, in Purgatory Shadow is a 7.5? Yeah. In Purgatory Shadow is a... Well, no, 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 hold on, hold on. I would give Purgatory Shadow like a 6.5. 6.5. This one? Yeah. I I'm mean... going gonna, gonna to stick with 7.5, and I'll... I think the gear. Listen, the Garrick stuff is... Isn't as intriguing. I, I love the character Garrick, but when it's, it just it doesn't intrigue me as much. But the execution of the episode was so good. It was, and the ending of that episode is what bumps it more towards yes. an, a seven point five or eight or or in that ep because the ending of that episode was bananas. It was banana, and it's a really good episode. I give it a six five, but like it's still a really good episode. It's just yeah. not. It's. I mean, these aren't these aren't all home runs. I mean, that was a that was a solid double up the gap. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Someone's got to hit the double so we can bring in the power hitter to to. to uh, yeah. Now the next episode hunt. is up to bat with the runner in scoring position. They're down. We're down by one. We. I need big. We swing. need this run. We yeah. need a big swing. Uh, for. Uh, Are we doing a sports podcast? We can. Okay. Oh. Oh. I wonder if Bob Ponson needs another sports show. Let's ask him. No, they have. We have one. We, we have a brand new one. The, the 10... 10 the plus big, 4? No, big 10 4. Big 10 4. Oh, 10 4, good buddy. Break Which, a 1 9? I think. I, I don't know. They it, they just launched. So they it's a brand launched. new... They have one episode that just released this... Not this week. When you hear this, like a week ago. So okay. Cool. Okay, cool. Check it out if you're into sports or into podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> podcasts and all. Yeah. There are only a couple million. Yeah, yeah but... How many sports podcasts are there, though? A lot. How a many lot. sports podcasts are there on Odd Pods? None. One now, apparently. One, yeah. one, one, one. So one. there you go. All right. All right. Did you give it a rating? Yeah, I gave it no. an 8.5. 8.5. 8.5? Yeah. Really? That's that's, that's, that's that's a good story. It's a good story, a but like... execution. Okay. You're wrong, but okay. That was okay. the first time for everything. All right. Well... <laughs> Gentlemen, he didn't read it though. Gentlemen, tell us about Patreon. I rated it. I gave it seven point five. You, you went. You're going back and forth. You were like, no, no I said you I, flipped I said them. Because originally I, I said I'm going to flip them. Because originally I, I had Purgatory Shadow as an eight and the and the uniform you for the uniform at seven point five. And I flipped them. According to the ratings, Nick does not like this season. I do. I mean, it's not the. It's, it's, it's getting it's better. Up the it's, pace. it's picking up. It, it had a. It had a nice little lull there for a solid oh, sure few did. episodes. Oh, it sure did. Oh, yeah. Probably oh, yeah. Between, five, six episodes or more. Yeah, between Just, Trials and Tribulations yeah. to God, Rapture. Trials and Tribulations was so good. What, he who was without sin? <laughs> the, so I got forward a, a link on Twitter to a question for the 29th birthday of Deep Space Nine that Robert Q. With Wolf did. Mm -hmm. Said, ask me questions about DS9 for the birthday. Yeah. And I was reading some, and some were downright good. Like, what do you wish you never had a part of? He's like, or what? What, what do you regret having any part of fascination? Like things like that. It was pretty. It was. It was a fun read. Yeah. Where is that Twitter? Twitter. Okay. Gentlemen. Yes. Patreon. <laughs> yes. Patreon.com. Uh, keeping up with the Cardassians. We'd love to have you. We would love to have you. We'd love to. There's plenty of. Uh, Patreon exclusive episodes out there now. There's, I think mm -hmm. we have four or five, mm -hmm. um, and we make two a month, and you can only hear them on Patreon. Um, so far, the feedback has been pretty great. Uh, we, it, it's not, it's not Star Trek. Everybody gets a turn. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not Star Trek related, really. It's uh, mostly either just general life stuff or stuff about us or. And we're or, accepting or, questions as yeah. well. And you yeah. can you can ask us questions, we'll answer. Um, you can suggest topics for Patreon episode uh, Patreon exclusive episodes. Yeah, we're looking forward. Yeah. Um, and if you're the if you are at the top tier of Patreon, we also do a live Q and A where you can ask us anything you want in real time. Yeah. Um, and see our stupid faces. Yeah. And our stupid answers. Oh yeah. They will guarantee be done. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So if, if you're here, if you're if, the, if you're here for the podcast for the dumb, you, go to Patreon. Plenty and, shenanigans. Yeah, plenty, plenty more shenanigans there. Um, plenty more shenanigans on Twitter at Cardassians Pod. Instagram keeping underscore up underscore Cardassians where it's all shenanigans. <laughs> yes. Uh, Facebook, 
Slightly fewer shenanigans on Facebook. Stop trying on Facebook. Anyways, find us at those places. Yes. Oh, YouTube. YouTube, yes. If you want to see our dumb faces. Exactly. YouTube. I'm Nick. This I'm is Rob. Oh, you already Hello. said Joe? Yeah. yeah, I'm Joe. Bye! Bye. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.